Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Elliot here from the Retro Future. We have a very rare, very expensive, possibly the rarest and most expensive Game Boy I have ever disassembled on this channel. This is a Toyota Game Boy Pocket. This was a Japanese exclusive offer that when you bought a Toyota, you got one of these with it, a Game Boy Pocket in a clear sort of skeleton edition. Now this one is in dire need of a good clean. You can see it's got a load of congealed crud and dust and dirt underneath the buttons and in the speaker. And being that this is transparent, you can see all of the grime that's worked its way in through the, you know, the holes and the openings in the case. It's also got a very scratched screen lens as well as obviously the screen damage. Luckily we bought a Game Boy Light for five pounds and it came with this little Game Boy Pocket, which has a perfect screen. So we're gonna take that one uh, out of here and put it in there and I'll repair this screen and fit it in that one. So uh, we'll keep this nice and original and in mint condition as far as we can. It also needs the screws replaced um, and these ones are perfect. So I'm gonna be using these ones as well as a bit of a donor. And besides that, it just needs a really good clean. So without any further ado, roll the intro. This thing was 15,600 yen, which is about $150, about 120 pounds. I'll put the exact price up on the screen. The inland shipping was 520 yen, which is about $5. Uh, so yeah, this came to a total of 16,620 yen. Now that's a lot of money, but these things on eBay sell anywhere between 500 pounds unit only to 2,000 pounds with the box, so it's a very rare Game Boy. Um, I cannot instill that in you enough. It's very rare, so I'm very nervous actually to take it apart, but I've done this quite a lot, so I think we should be okay. Without any further ado, this video is not sponsored by iFixit, and it's not sponsored by Sendico, but this screwdriver kit was provided to me for free a little while ago. They don't even know that I'm making this video, but I will be using this screwdriver, because it's bloody brilliant, I really like it. And this Game Boy did come from Sendico, so I'll leave a link to the Sendico website in the description below, so you can see if you can find some good bargains yourself but this is in no way affiliated, sponsored, no money has been received, no bribe, no nothing, leave me alone. Okay, so there's six tri-wing screws that we're gonna need to remove from the back. Um, I'm sure by now, a lot of you will know this, but regardless. So uh, yeah, this is actually a Game Boy that has been on my list for a while. It's a very sort of quirky Game Boy. I would say it's more of a promotional item than it is a custom Game Boy. It's not really anything like unique. It's just the screen lens, which I'm sure really wouldn't have taken them very long to uh, to come up with that design, if you can even call it that. It's just their logo slapped on the end of it. Um, and it could probably be very easily faked, but I'm sure there's some sort of um, serial number, um, you know, like a series of serial numbers that could, could be the legit ones and show that it's legit. Unfortunately, the battery cover is broken and the tab has snapped off. So I'm gonna have to try and find, I think I have a spare one, but we'll find out very soon, uh, battery cover, um, because we're not gonna be able to use that. But luckily, there's a little bit of corrosion on that battery terminal, but any damage on this, we're just gonna use um, the stuff from the green Game Boy. Oh, I haven't even tested if this works. We shall use Solar Striker, because that is the best game in all of the galaxy. Um, right, so I have a feeling this probably is going to be okay, but the corrosion in the battery terminal might cause a bit of a problem. Okay, yeah, no sign of life. Oh. There we go, it does work. The uh, image on, of the Nintendo logo is corrupt because the pins obviously need a good clean and it did take a while to turn on and if you move the batteries around, it will be a bit hit and miss. So it clearly needs a good clean and uh, obviously the screen replaced. So very relieving because obviously the motherboard had a good chance of being quite damaged there with the corrosion in the battery terminal, uh, which I will show you in just a moment. Can you see the uh, the corrosion in there? It's just sort of, and that, that should come off. I don't think that's gonna be a, a permanent damage thing, but I will use the one, I think, from the, uh, maybe I'll give that a go at cleaning that up. I prefer to use everything original as possible. Let's, uh, oh yeah, that's lovely. Let's take this cart shield off as well because we're gonna give everything a clean. It's really bizarre, I, I sort of get a split directly down the middle of people who prefer the start to finish videos and people who prefer the chopped up ones with music and stuff. For me, I prefer doing the more edited ones because it's a bit more, um, 
bit more of entertainment, whereas this is more sort of educational, maybe? I don't know. Who knows? Um, okay, so there's the battery cover, sorry, the cart cover coming off the back there, and uh, you will probably not be able to notice, but there is some uh, some dirt and stuff on there, which we'll need to wipe off and give that a little clean up, potentially even a little polish. Um, and that's almost everything off the back here. Let's just get the uh, the battery terminal out. So yeah, as you can see, that is rather unhealthy. Now, moving on to the front part of the Game Boy, can you see just how grotty and grimy all of that is there? There's a lot of dirt and debris and some little white thing. Don't know what that is, that's fallen off somewhere. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of, you might be able to catch it in the reflection there, a lot of dirt if I rub my finger along there. Yeah, very nasty, but that is what we want to see because it's very nice and rewarding to clean off. So there's three Phillips screws that you need to undo. Now be really, really careful um, undoing screws because A, you could round the screw, but B, especially on a transparent shell, you could round the screw threads uh, and sort of chew them up. And then you're gonna see a lot of white sort of plastic, like which is broken up a bit. And that's not obviously what you want. So just be really careful. Okay, so I've zoomed the camera in for this next little bit. So there's two white tabs either side of the ribbon cable connector for the screen. If you just pop them up, a little bit of uh, pressure. Um, these are ceramic end tweezers, so they're really, really gentle. And uh, we can also use them to pull out the ribbon cables. What you're gonna do is lift up the motherboard and hold onto the ribbon cable and it will all pop off like that. And luckily the front of the motherboard all looks very nice. We do need a little clean, um, but that's everything to be expected. And yeah, look, a little bit of dirt and stuff on the speaker. But yeah, all the buttons, no corrosion. Uh, really, really pleased with that so far. The power switch is usually quite dirty. You can see that there is actually a little bit of sort of uh, fluff and stuff that's uh, gotten stuck in there, but that's okay. That's because that's obviously open and exposed. Um, we'll give the wheels a good clean. You can see more of that dirt that I was talking about earlier on as well. Um, and we'll give the contacts a good clean. There are a little bit sort of uh, matted just from oxidized exposed metal. So we'll give that a nice clean. And uh, yeah, this is looking really good. Also, I want to try out the official Nintendo cartridge cleaner. I think that could be quite cool to show that. Um, but let's take a look at these buttons because this is going to be quite grim, I suspect. So here we go. D-pad button membrane. Yum. Look at that. Actually, that's not too bad. I mean, it is pretty disgusting, um, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So there's that one. Again, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Most of the dirt is actually in the shell itself, but... Yeah, I mean, definitely needs a clean, but not too bad. Let's have a look at the A and B. Yeah, not too bad again. All of that will just come off with just a little bit of tap water. Okay, start and select, here we go. Probably the least used buttons. Yeah, they look fairly good as well. Um, oh God, that's, is that not, what is that? Is that a, a spider sack or is that a congealed dust ball? I don't know what that is. Bless me. Probably dust. Right, power switch. Looks okay. Last but not least, the screen. So this isn't a massive uh, worry because it's already quite damaged, but I'm just gonna very gently twist the shell sort of side to side and it will pop up like that. But I'm not too worried about this one because it's a little bit damaged anyway. That actually does look like it's the uh, the rear um, protective film and polarizer that's burnt, so that's gonna be an absolute nightmare to fix, and then you're still gonna just have to backlight it at the end because obviously you've removed the reflective film. But here we go, that is uh, the shell all stripped down, so we're gonna go give this a nice clean. You can see in there that that is very, very nasty, but um, I'm really pleased with this so far. It does look like it's gonna come out uh, quite nice. 
The shell is a little bit yellowed, but it's actually not too bad. I think this is gonna come out looking really, really nice once that's all you know cleaned out and everything. So enough of that. Let's go and put all of this in the sink and give it a really nice soak in some hot soapy water. Then we'll clean up the motherboard and disassemble the green one. I'm gonna do that off camera, get the screen out of it, and we'll be good to uh, reassemble. You can see as well, the attention to detail of the clean is gonna be quite important in these clear ones. There's a lot of um, dirt and stuff under there. Probably wanna put this in an ultrasonic cleaner to dislodge some of that, but I'm just gonna go through with some hot soapy water and then a cotton bud and uh, work my way around it. Shit. So that is everything back from being cleaned. And as you can see, it looks absolutely lovely. It really has come out looking minty fresh. It will smell a lot nicer and there won't be a ball of dust in sight. And as you can see, the D-pad looks really good. We do need to go over just a few little fine details with a Q-tip. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. So what we need to do now is disassemble the green Game Boy because I wanna take apart uh, that Game Boy and take out the screen and take out the screws. You will have also noticed as well that I removed the sticker from the back. I've kept the sticker. If I ever went to sell this, which is pretty unlikely, uh, then I'd put the original one back on. Uh, but I have an aftermarket one right here. The other thing I could do is find a good condition original Game Boy and take the sticker off of there. Uh, but I'm very happy just having an aftermarket one on here. After all, I will be playing this Game Boy. I play all my Game Boys regardless of how rare they are. So I'm now going to take apart this green Game Boy and I thought I'll take my watch off. This is a little chronograph so uh, we can actually see how quickly I do it. Um, it's going to go round for every one minute obviously. Uh, I reckon it's probably going to take me about five minutes to strip it down completely. Uh, so I'll stop it the second I'm finished and we'll see how long it takes me. Roll some music. Better put the right trying bit on first. Three, two, one, go. Done. That took me exactly two, two minutes. There's no way that took me two minutes. Did that take me two minutes? I'd be very pleased if that was actually two minutes. And then you, when you reset this thing, it's so cool. Boom, okay, cool. Right, well, um, if that was two minutes, then great. Um, I need to be really, really careful with the screen because if you do it too hard, you can actually end up causing the uh, ed edges of the glass on the screen to crack and then pixels will start to leak. So I think this one's uh, fairly good. So according, by the way, to console variations, it is estimated that between 100 and 500 of this variation were released. And uh, yeah, given away when purchasing a Toyota car. So what we're gonna do now is go over the motherboard and the button membranes with some cotton buds or Q-tips and some isopropyl alcohol and give everything a really nice clean. We wanna get rid of the dust and uh, give the button contacts a nice clean. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that.
Now, although I did say this Game Boy is in really, really nice condition, it's always a good habit to uh, to go ahead and clean the button contacts. You can see all that black stuff there. That is the um, coating of these button membranes coming off and wearing down. And then it leaves a sort of a film over the top of these contacts, which means that you're not going to get as uh, reliable button presses. So it is a very, very good idea, even if to the naked eye it looks really good. Um, it's a good idea just to clean them. You may be able to see, um, or not, I don't know, the little sort of black circle markings. Uh, can you see that anywhere? There you go, potentially down there. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. A very satisfying clean is the speaker, because obviously you've got holes in the case uh, to let the sound travel out. Uh, and yet, as you can see, very grotty. So this will actually improve your sound quality as well. And then on the back, all of that disgusting dust and debris from the, uh, the battery cover opening. Right, now let's see what we can do to the volume and contrast wheel just to get them um, working very nicely. So I get a little sort of um, drip of isopropyl alcohol on the end of the Q-tip and just drop it into the uh, potentiometers and then I just move them around and that will actually clean the metal contacts underneath the wheel. I know that's going to be common knowledge to a lot of people but it's uh, definitely worth noting and it's a very simple thing uh, to do which gives you great results. And then I'm going to do the exact same with the power switch. Some people suggest that you should take off the metal um, cover on the power switch to give that a clean. I think that's a little bit unnecessary. Um, from my past experience, one or two drops of isopropyl alcohol in there, followed by a little bit of this movement, very, very gently, uh, gives you a fantastic result. It really, really does. So that is the motherboard clean. Now we're gonna go over the button membrane. So to do this, I take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, again, on a Q-tip, and then just go over the sort of loose uh, top surface of the um, a little black contacts uh, and that will just remove the sort of shiny film off the top of it. Uh, you can see the state of the Q-tip. Now this Game Boy was clearly quite loved so a lot of the plastic on the, uh, the D-pad and the action buttons and the power switch has worn down and scratched up a bit but I'm not going to be replacing the buttons. The danger of doing uh, every, replacing everything is the only thing you're going to have original is the motherboard and the shell. So these are all of the original buttons. Um, as I said, I will be using the new tri-wing screws uh, from the green one, but the, uh, the regular screws, the Phillips screws, are all going to be the original ones. So the very final thing I want to do is just go over the inside of these button wells. Um, I'm not going to be using any sort of isopropyl alcohol. It's just going to be done dry because it is already loose from the time spent in the hot soapy water. So just giving it a nice rub will make it come off. So it's definitely worth doing, especially on clear shells. So now it's time to reassemble the Game Boy. I'll start off by popping the screen in first and making sure that's set down nicely. And then we can sit all our buttons down. So the power switch. So there we go, there is all of the front pieces put back in. So now we can take our nice clean motherboard. And uh, I always start off with the ribbon cable first, making sure the little uh, latches are lifted up and then guide the speaker in. and then set everything down like that and uh, obviously align the power switch. There we go. And then make sure you lock these two little locks because otherwise the screen won't display properly. And let's go ahead and put those screws back in, the original ones that came with it. So when you're reassembling a Game Boy, here is a good tip for you, especially in the clear shells. Go anti-clockwise as if you're removing the screw and listen for a little click noise. There we go. That means that the screw is falling into its original threads uh, because the shells are injection molded and the screw thread is not uh, tapped into the um, shell from the mold. That is done with the screw when it's assembled. So you want to make sure that you're not re-tapping the screw post, otherwise you'll churn up the threads that were in there before, or you may even crack the actual screw post. So 
just be really careful with that. Let's go ahead and give the original cartridge uh, shield a little bit of a polish up. Um, and then, yeah, we'll set that one back in, the original one. God, look how dirty that got. Okay, that's not too bad. Right, let's set that back in. And these are obviously the original screws. Okay, now before we close it up, let's take another Q-tip and some more isopropyl alcohol and we'll quickly clean up the um, battery contacts here. And then we can set the back down like so. Grab our tri-wing screw and start reassembling the final stages of the Game Boy. Oh my goodness. Right, we're pretty much there. I'm gonna go and grab a brand new microfiber cloth and some Mr. Sheen. Oh yeah, that's absolutely lovely. This really does feel like an OG retro future video now, doesn't it? Okay, so let's remove some of this sticker residue that we've got. We've got some going across here. Uh, there's some from the battery uh, compartment down there. And then there's also some from obviously the original label. So let's see what we can do to that. Don't really want to use isopropyl alcohol um, because it can ruin the, uh, the finish of the transparent shell. There we go. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. That's all gone now. Very, very pleased with that. Okay, so let's quickly clean up this battery contact with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Lovely, look at that. Okay, where's our batteries? Chuck them in. Awesome, okay, and then last but not least, the sticker. Okay, here we go. Absolutely perfect. So there we go. The Toyota Game Boy Pocket has been restored to its former glory. And the only thing that is no longer the same is the screen, the tri-wing screws, and the sticker on the back. Besides that, everything is exactly how it was at the start. The battery cover is still broken. I need to track down a new one of those. Um, I'll get an original one because they do float around on eBay. And obviously, I'll just keep uh, this stuff all together as well as the sticker just for the sake of completion and the tri-wing screws. Um, but yeah, let's quickly turn it on. By the way, if you got this far in the video, leave the word Toyota down below and I'll heart every comment uh, with the word Toyota in it. So let's go ahead and turn it on. The contrast wheel. Lovely and smooth, and the volume as well. Perfect. And we'll check the, uh, the buttons to see how responsive they are. Perfect, look at that. Absolutely spot on. And that's what happens when you clean those contacts and the membranes as well. Um, so yeah, I really love how low-key this Game Boy is. You know, the fact that it says Toyota there. Um, it doesn't look like it's anything too flashy, but obviously between you and me, we both know that it's a very rare little thing. So I think I paid around about £150 for this thing. $150, £120, um, all in. And uh, yeah, I could sell this right now for triple. So really, really pleased um, with the result of this thing. Let me know what your thoughts are in a comment section below. Check out Solar Striker, by the way. It's a great little game. And um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing this video in this sort of style. It's been a, it's been a lot of fun. Um, just sort of more stripped back and chilled and hopefully really nice and in-depth for all of you. Uh, so yeah, if you have enjoyed, as I said, leave the word Toyota below. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.